This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That cross out your eyes. I had to take them back, Heather B. I know it. Oh, wait, if I put the headphones, the, the beach headphones, different. does that yeah. mean I get three headphones? If we take pictures? You know, you can, add, wow. Adam, you can actually take those. It's so loud. It sounds a lot different it's now. It's so loud. I bet your ears are shot after decades wow. of hip-hop, huh? What? I'm sorry, what'd you say? <laughs> I said, are your ears shot I after? I can't, I'm you sorry. You can't hear a damn thing, right? Well, my voice sounds, I sound weird. You know, yeah. I, I like it more like this, where I can't hear yeah. myself. That's, that's interesting. As an MC. You don't want to hear your own voice? Well, no, because I was just, um, I just heard the song Sabotage. Uh huh. And uh, I never listened to, I like, it's not like I listen to, I don't listen to Beastie Boys songs. What? Mm-hmm. Some musicians listen to their own songs and some don't. I don't. You spend, you know, a long time writing the songs, recording the songs, and performing the songs. Like, I don't need to hear it again. I've heard it a thousand times performing it. And so I just heard the song Sabotage. I'm like, why am I yelling at everybody? <laughs> like, stop. Just take it down a notch. Dude, stop screaming at me. Wow. No? no anybody? That's blasphemous, man. I, I'm going to take your Beastie Boy stripe off you, man. Go ahead. Do, you know, you don't Go listen ahead. to the Beastie Boys? Well, I mean, honestly. Do you listen to this show back after you did it? I absolutely do not. Okay, there you go. Good point. <laughs> you good, are, point. You know good point. Good point. Man, the is one that a sound effect? Yes, yep. it is. Okay, at, cool. Ad Rock from the Beastie We're on Boys the radio are here. Hey! Wow, there's a lot of people in here. Yeah, man. We're all excited. Uh, okay, so let me ask you this. Hey, man. I don't have serious radio. So I, what? I've, no, I don't have it. I don't have a radio. You I, don't need a radio. You could get the app and put it on your phone. I don't. Come on, apps. <laughs> what am I, 12? <laughs> Come on. Oh, you don't, what kind of phone do you have? You have an iPhone? I have a, yeah, like a, you know, downloadable smartphone <laughs> thing. Yo, we're going to, down before you leave, let's download that. No, I'm just going to try to say a bunch of stuff to see if I get free stuff after this. <laughs> okay. That's right, why so I'm wearing my Beats headphones, headphones. And now you're about to get the app for Apple, fu- you know, telephone. So let me ask you that Paul Revere beat. <laughs> that Paul Revere beat. <laughs> yes. Listen to this. Okay, so here's what we thought growing up in Oakland, California. Did they reverse Tila Rocks? It's yours. Mm. Hmm. Do you want it? That's me in the background. That was me going, that was, ho, that was me. Wait, stop. Stop the music. Stop the music. <laughs> the crowd noise and Tila Rock is yours. Yes, you're in the crowd noise. I, yes, I am. And that beat is is not the it's not the same beat. It's two different beats. But you know what? It could be my drum machine though. What do you mean? I sound like I have a cold <laughs> right now. <laughs> Still on the voice. No, uh, <laughs> I I okay. So I was the first one out of all of us that bought uh, an 808, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And so I had this 808, and then it, they kept it at, at Chunking Studio. But you know what? It's yours wasn't recorded at Chunking, so it's probably not that same drum machine. At any rate, I am in the background because me and my friend Dave Skilkin and Rick Rubin went to I think it was Queens to record "It's Yours." Yeah, with uh, and that was the first. So I was just saying that that was the first night I ever had Brass Monkey because we, you know, we were like the party crowd and we're saying ho and all that stuff. And then J- DJ Jazzy J uh, broke out a bottle of Brass Monkey and and. And we were really excited. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and that was the first time you drank Brass Monkey. That's the first time I ever had Brass Monkey. And it's delicious. If you've never had it, it's really delicious. You still drink it? I, you know, I don't actively drink it, but yeah. I would, I sure. I mean, yeah. if there was some here, I'd love a sip. It's tasty. I mean, it's ar- <laughs> it's based in orange juice. So it's yeah. basically a breakfast drink. Brass Monkey is a breakfast drink. Okay, that's yeah. the first time I've heard that. We should get around. And so that's how. But that- it's, it's not the same beat. It's not, it's, it's, okay. um. I don't know who programmed the beat. It was either Rick or Jazzy Day programmed the beat uh-huh. for It's Yours. And um, Yauk made the beat for um, Paul Revere. Okay. That was a se- very separate occasion, uh-huh. very separate time and date, studio uh-huh. and everything. So you guys were very... See, I didn't know I didn't know how instrumental you guys were in producing the early music from like License to Ill, Paul Boost, Paul's Boutique. Yeah, yeah. You, of course. Yeah? Yes. I always find it strange that that musicians don't make their own music. Really? I, well, that, well, that's just me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I find it very strange that musicians don't make their own music or like make their own record covers. Uh huh. The the artwork. 
I think that's weird, wouldn't you? If you were putting out a record, wouldn't you be like, well, I should be making this music too, and this is kind of what I want it to look like. So how do you feel about artists who don't sing or rap their own lyrics? That's strange. (laughs) Isn't that strange? I don't know. But, I mean, you know, it's not like so many pop singers don't write their lyrics and they write there's 10 billion love songs that these singers didn't write there so i guess it makes sense for rappers to not rap their own lyrics i mean that's fine for for me i think it's weird yeah for me personally if someone else does it that's their own business but you know what i mean like yeah. I, I i i think it's it's odd at rock you know, i think it's odd that's all i'm is saying is it yeah. it's odd yeah. so yeah. are you listening to any who are artists now like rappers what are rappers you listen to now i don't listen any? to any new music really yeah mm. i don't done huh or why not i you know there's so much to i you know I, I was gonna say that I'm really busy, but I'm really not. <laughs> I really don't. I, I don't actually do anything ever uh-huh. yeah. except order Chinese food. So I don't uh-huh. and watch TV. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. Like I just don't. You know what am I gonna do? Listen to like new songs. You know what I mean? Like I, you know, I, I'm interested, but like I go through phases. Do you know what I mean? Like there's so there's so much great reggae music from the '70s. Like why do I need to? There's so much undiscovered stuff like I kind of like that's what I like. Yeah. And you know when you become an old person you get stuck in a different time period and so I'm stuck in that time where I was still discovering reggae and different uh-huh. types of music and so I'm still di- discovering types of music. Wow. That's real. That's interesting. I'm <laughs> just saying like I don't like like my theory is like nobody wants to see the old guy at the club. Mm-hmm. And so like you know what I mean like w- nobody wants me to listen to current rap music. Uh-huh. Nobody wants me to listen to like what am I going to be at, like, the the club listening to? I don't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's hard. Like, I was going to try to say a new genre of music, but I don't even know what it is. I don't care. I don't actually care. And I feel like if you're if you're a rapper and you're, and you're 20 years old, why would you, why would you care about me? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're making, like. Well, but maybe because you, you help pioneer yeah rappers rappers 20 year old rappers don't care they don't care they've never cared and that's why i love rap music <laughs> what about mm-hmm. like a 45 year old jay-z would you listen he's to 45 <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you know what i'm saying but like rap music and maybe i'm gonna get a lot of heat for saying this but like rap music is the only music where kids just don't care about like rock music if you're making rock music right now you have to love led zeppelin yeah like you have to mm-hmm Rap music, a 20-year-old does not care about Public Enemy. I know that could be blasphemous, but I'm, it's the truth. Right. Mm-hmm. It's the truth, and that's fine. And that's why rap music is so different and special, because mm-hmm. it's so current. Mm-hmm. Very timely, right? It's very current and very timely, and it's always constantly changing and evolving. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. like, it's the whole thing of like kids today. The kids today don't give a shit what I think, and that's why I, that's, I love that. That's how it should be. Yeah. No, am mm-hmm. I wrong? There's no, no, silence no, 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 in the because, room. No, no, because it's... I just, that's how not, I think. No, no, silence not. because nobody is bold enough to say what you're saying. Like, people come up here and they tap dance and they want everybody to be their friend and they need the next new young thing to be on their record and kind of... So they don't. They won't say that, and they don't want to be the old person. They don't even want to recognize their age. So for you to say it, we say a lot of this shit, but we're the only ones sometimes, so it's good to hear you say it. Like, Chuck D is very involved with rap music and very involved with young rappers. But Mm -hmm. that's not him trying to be cool with the kids. That's him loving and being very passionate about this music and wanting other people internationally to love what he loves. Right. Mm -hmm. But, like, (laughs) he's not trying to, like... To be, yeah, to get him on the next one. He's not trying to be 20 years old. Right. And I mean, that's cool if that's, like, I just feel like there's a lot, you know, like, there's a lot of like midlife crisis in rap music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. d- like, do I wear skinny jeans? Do I wear baggy jeans? Like, what am I supposed do, to do, do today? The There's new, too much to think about. Do I use the new slang? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> fresh. It's not fresh anymore. But Adam. <laughs> yes. I could understand maybe for the youngsters not wanting to hear a public enemy pander to, you know, their interest right now. But do yes. you think it's important for like the preservation of history for them to go back and care about? I, I think so. Yeah. I think like if you don't if you love rap music and you don't have Public Enemy's first record, you're or Jungle Brothers first and second record, you're missing out. 
you don't you, you're really missing out. Mm-hmm. But I'm 48 years old. Who cares what I think? Do you know what I mean? Like you're not actually missing out. Like when I was 20, all I listened to was current but, current yeah, music. Got yeah. it. So does and, that? And, no, because I, I growing up, I was really into punk rock music, uh-huh. and so I wasn't allowed to listen to the Beatles. To like literally, like I didn't want to hear the Beatles. And like, if you've never listened to Beatles records, you're, there's something like you have to listen. They're one of the greatest, you know, songwriters of our of history. Yeah. And so, like, it was only later, years later, I was like, wow, these Beatles, they they write some good songs. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, like, it's yeah. like when you're 20, you have to have all these like weird rules about what you can do and can't do, and that's like what makes generations happen, and the world goes around, and old people old, young people young, and. That's my theory. Does that mean that it's disposable rap music? Mm. By the same theory? <laughs> Throw it away, trash it, doesn't matter that it existed? Mm. Wow, I definitely was not going in that direction. <laughs> 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 I'm, just, I'm, just, no, I'm just curious. But, like, but it, yes, it, I mean, it, 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 you can say that if you're, yeah. you know, if when you're a certain age, when you're young, you don't, can we curse on this show? Go, go for it. Course, when you're a certain age, you don't give a fuck, and that's the way you're supposed to be. So yes, yeah. it's disposable, because you don't think about the future, you don't think of the past, it's all in the moment, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. So yeah, history is disposable. So is that did when did you guys, as BC Boys, stop recording new music? Stop recording new music? Yeah. Um, 11, 2012? Oh, so, have, so has that music been released? No. Mm. Will it be released? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's a public outcry for that new music. And oh, there's a public outcry. Of course there is. Of course there is. Yeah, yes. Turn that thing up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Talk your shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, but, no, you know, usually, for the most part, unreleased material is unreleased for a reason because it's not, it sucks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did, did, is that uh, why? Don't you think? I, yeah, I think I don't know. It's, and, it's not as best. It's not. It's not the, like you put out your record and then there's all those songs that you didn't put out because they're, you don't like them as much as I, I don't know. Yeah. But we do have a lot of unreleased material that could be interesting to put out just for people that really like the band. And so at some yeah. point I might do that. Okay. Mm. Um, at Rock is here, man. I gotta tell you, bro. You know, first time I ever performed in front of a crowd was a song I wrote. Well, some verses I wrote for a best friend of mine. And it was a, a school uh, pep rally. Okay. And we took the beat, the instrumental to this song I'm going to play now, and rapped over it. And that started my trek into the business of hip hop. Wait, so this is going to be your voice in. No. Oh. That was just the song. I'm, I don't remember the rhyme, man. Come on, man. That was years ago. But you know, you recorded who cares? it or you just wrote it? I wrote it and then we performed it in front of the so whole school. So you're saying school. you don't have a cassette of it? Nobody has a cassette? I wish. Because that, that would, would be, be pretty, really pretty interesting. Thing, yeah. yeah, nobody has a cassette, but mm. somebody videotaped it. It's footage somewhere. It's like, footage I'm somewhere. Sure. My buddy Eric Matthews, my best friend in junior high, he, he, he probably has a video somewhere. Yeah. I'll find it. If you release the unreleased talk music. A, talk about BC, a, a public <laughs> outcry for something that somebody yeah, wants we'll, to see. We'll, 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 we'll make that the bonus, the deluxe yeah, album, you know. Okay. Um, uh, it's this song right here, Hold It Now. Yeah, I used to go by J-Rock. What's some of that some flow out, though, Sway? What, what that flow was, was sounding rock. like? I was J-Rock. But what that flow was sounding <laughs> like? <laughs> I just would like to say that it just reminded me. Because, no, 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 no. Because my friend Neil... Uh, grew up in Texas, and he did a thing in in high school that was like a thing. It was like a at the mall. He did a rap with his friends that was a just stay in school, stay off of drugs rap, and they all of them were high and cutting school while they were doing it. <laughs> oh, and it's on YouTube, and I just felt like I needed to say <laughs> that. Needed to say that. Yeah, FYI. Yeah. No, I wasn't high then, man. Um, I wasn't implying that you yeah. were in any way. <laughs> you know, Adam, I'm not condoning Adam. that behavior or saying that the children should do these things. Yeah, <laughs> don't sleep till Brooklyn. Um, Ad Rock is here yes. from the Beastie Boys. Uh, I'm going to take a few phone calls, man, uh, if you don't mind. 888-742-3345. We got uh, Pat on the line from Atlanta. Good morning, what Pat. What up, Pat? Hey, Pat. Hey, good morning. How you guys doing today? Doing all right, man. Man, Ad Rock, man, I just want to say, man, you guys were so instrumental in hip-hop, man. I mean, one of the greatest of all time. And I, myself, personally, got a lot of girls off of rapping your verses, especially Paul Revere and Rhyming and Stealing. No, you didn't, Pat. Come on, stop. I'm trying to tell you. See, I grew up in the ACL, bro. All right. In the ACL, 
<laughs> we weren't really beating Beastie Boys. And I heard you guys, yep. and I was like, damn, who the hell is that? Yep. I mean, the bass, and I would spit the verses, and everybody thought it was me. There you go. But I wouldn't tell them where I got it from. Why should you? Exactly. I I appreciate your honesty about this, Pat. (laughs) It it was cool. And one more thing, bro. They played this at this party in college, Intergalactic, the hardest party song ever, if you ever hear it in a club. Man, I just really want to. You guys, this was the shit. That's all I can say. Bro. Wow, thank you, man. Thank you very much. Oh. All right, we got O'Shea from Illinois on the line. Good morning, O'Shea. Hello, hello, everyone. It's Bo hey. Shea. You know how I do. O'Shea, hey, my hey, bad. Hey, hey uh, I just wanted to say, BC Boys, man, thanks for fucking my life up, man. I'm 32 years old, and I'm still listening to rap music. That's <laughs> all, man. <laughs> Wow, what an honor to have that, Rock. <laughs> <laughs> you know that you did that. <laughs> okay. All right, now. Okay, I don't, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to say to that. Oh, you ain't got to say nothing, man. Uh, but we- I thank you. If that, that's a compliment, I'll take it. Okay. Oh, uh, now we got a... Uh, what's going on? My two, two of my interns, man, I, I, I made them really, you know, I told them who you are, pieces and bits, and I told them I had to come up with great questions for you. You know, this is uh, entering the music business, and I figured, hey, what better way to do it than talk with someone who has a wealth of knowledge? Take it on that mic. Wh- which mic we want to put on? Okay, come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. You get get some shine and don't fuck up. Smile. <laughs> Smile. Here you go. Say hi, ladies. It's only millions. It's international. Where you going? You just yeah. walk right by him. He's right there. Get in front of the yeah. camera. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> the guy has been talking this whole time. <laughs> okay, <go ahead>. Hello. <laughs> Say your age, too. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kwesi and I'm 22. Uh, Hi, Kwesi. Hi, how are you? Um, Seeing that hip-hop was such a predominantly black industry, Mm. how do you feel, you know, what attributes did you guys have that kind of made people gravitate towards you? Well, Mm. raw natural talent, obviously. (laughs) (laughs) Well... There was a, a, a lot of sarcasm in those claps right there, <laughs> and I feel upset by that. Well, you know, when we started um, rapping, it wasn't an industry in, in any way. Uh, rap music, you know, because it, it really was uh, in little pockets in the country, but, you know, like L.A., Chicago, a couple different places. Like, it wasn't, this was like a long time ago (laughs) so it definitely wasn't an industry and so it was kind of like everything was new and so for us to come along i think people definitely some people didn't like that you know white guys were rapping that we felt that we were trying to take take from you know a community and trying to take from from a music and and i feel like after our records came out people were like well they're clearly doing something different with mm-hmm. the music and not trying to be a certain thing and so maybe that's what it was and it's also like a different just it was a different time mm-hmm. it was a different time all right that was a great question there uh, well done <laughs> young millennial well put <laughs> jaleesa millennial. Uh-huh. go ahead jaleesa. hello i'm jaleesa i'm 21 uh-huh. i just had a question being that you guys were unique during the era and i also know how punk was also uprising how did you guys kind of get the feedback of the public how was the response being that you were something different that no one really expected um i don't know i mean i guess the public there was a good feedback because we did we were successful and people bought a lot of copies of our first record but but i think it goes back to that the, that last question that we were um, we're, we started as a punk band and we're, we're always a punk band. And I think that we approach um, our, you know, rap music through um, a punk rock sort of background. And I think that that's what sort of set us apart and why people maybe gravitated towards us is that we weren't trying to be anything but us, except for a lot of the time we were trying to be Run DMC. <laughs> but that's 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 another story. But Run DMC is also a punk rock group because when they came out, there was like... It was a time where people were, you know, like wearing a lot of like fancy leathers, you know, like Eddie Murphy clothes. And it was like you had to be a certain way. And Run DMC came out, like did not care. And they were like a punk group. And that's kind of where we were. And I I hope that that answered the question in some sort of way. Yeah, perfect. Thank okay, you. Good. Oh, good, good job, you guys. You can come back tomorrow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> great job.
Well, you got Ben here with sandwiches. Yes, yeah, I've been taking up all <laughs> of the time. Yeah, and, and Ben uh, is a good friend of mine and Heather B's, yeah. right? He's known for feeding us for free. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he has his shop, so Heather. Heather, you love his shop. Only, I, only these two, though. Okay. Yeah. I, no, I do love his shop, <laughs> Numpang. It's it's very close to us as well. And, and I love his juices, too, because I use the juices for the happy hour with HeatherB.com. I mm. make a lot of my drink recipes. Wait, Had, what? I don't have serious recipes. Uh, serious <laughs> radio. So yeah, well, I have a drink website where I just do crazy drink recipes. Last week was DJ Premier's birthday, so we uh, had a party for him on air for his show, and I use Numpang, <clears throat> the, the juice, to make DJ Premier a blood orange Hennessy. Wow. Yeah, it was nice. You, I didn't <laughs> know. Fantastic. I didn't know you. Didn't. I don't know anything. But it's That's fantastic. <laughs> Next time, did you I, leave the house? Yeah, please. <laughs> I, oh, I, have, I have to walk my dog three times a day. But yeah, oh, God, you're just such so a soft spot. See, that's interesting because Sway, please no, don't. you got to share this with Adam. Come on, mm-hmm. you a dog owner, you're a pet owner too. You have a dog. Adam, what kind of dog do you have? Harry. <laughs> <laughs> she's, you know, she's like a. I don't know what she is, but she's got a beard and a rescue. Oh yeah. Okay, I had a rescue as well. And the and dog whisperer came by, Caesar. Milan. Yeah. Yeah, Sway's, oh, really? Sway's friend. Yeah. Mm. And I, he decided. A lot, a lot of big names coming in and out of here. Yeah. I, I understand. So yeah. 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 Sway's yeah. friend. I'm going to be and working. They decided that I don't walk my dog enough. You don't mm. walk your dog at all. Yeah. Well, I. I was telling the story. It was my version. It was my version. Uh, I don't walk my dog enough. So it's been an outcry of me not walking my dog. How how often do you walk the dog? Be honest. I let her out in the backyard. You have a yard? Yeah. Come well, on, talk okay. to me. What's the size of the dog? She's uh, 90 pounds. <laughs> so like in, in, in like hand gesture size. Like you can't carry, nobody in this room could pick her up and carry her. Yeah. The big, yeah. <laughs> The big, you know, the, the dogs have to run. <laughs> How big is your yard, though? She got room. No, she don't. Does she have friends? Bes- Me, like, the besides- rescuer, her savior. <laughs> right, <okay. laughs> Massa. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know you. You seem like a very nice, kind person. I'm she a is, rescuer. You're, Thank you, yes. Babe. You're an animal hero. Mm-hmm. You've, we've established this. Make me feel this. good, Adams. <laughs> keep, keep pouring it on because I, I need to shut up no. Caesar and sway. Um, Caesar seems to be a, oh, a dog downhill. professional by trade. Um, so I, I would tend to defer to him. But that's your family. And no one can really come into your home and discuss what you, what goes on with your family. You're gaining me back. Go ahead, okay. keep going, uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know what else to say <laughs> right, about that. Okay. No, you, really gotta wa- you really should walk your dog. They're, they're, tell the truth, man. That's <laughs> what you should say. Okay, because you but, got... But if you have a yard, it's different. If you have an actual yard, that's fantastic. I have an actual yard. Mm. That's great. They get to... Does the dog dig and roll and... Oh, it's no digging. I have a deck. She can't... There's no, there's no grass or dirt back there. She just lays. <laughs> what? Oh, my she, God. She, to, she's a... She's okay, sunbathed. Okay, so listen, Heather. Here's, here's the thing. <laughs> to me... <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of misleading because a yard it's, equals yeah. grass or dirt the or yard some is pebbles, if trees. I got rocks. All right, listen. And a tree. So you guys collaborated. <laughs> Here, here's the thing, Heather. Okay. They they collaborated. <laughs> ben and Adam collaborated on a sandwich. Yes. Right. First off, the mm. collaboration is going to benefit who? Two uh, two dog shelters in Brooklyn, the oh, Bark damn. Animal <laughs> Shelter and. The badass Brooklyn animal <laughs> shelter of Brooklyn. Badass. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. So there's a few animal heroes in the studio today. <laughs> yes. Ow. Okay. Right. <laughs> just not to. Can it- I just say something? I'm sorry. I feel like the person talking should be in control of the sound effects. Can we okay. work on that? We in can the do future? that. You or- know, it's funny you say that because <laughs> we're about to get these new iPads. You, you, Familiar with that? Oh no, I don't have I don't <laughs> have one of those. <laughs> Apple makes those, right? Yeah. All okay. right. <laughs> and got a program on it where I'll be able to or she'll be able, whoever's talking could control the uh, sound effects. Good idea. It's not I mean, I'm just I'm ge- I'm a guest here. Yes. So I don't mean to offend or <laughs> yeah, insinuate. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Somebody, somebody just got fired. I don't know what you just I, did. I, well clearly I'm not being asked back. <laughs> I ain't pressing no buttons. No, no, you, so let's get this back to, to to why we're here. Okay. Why why we're here. Ben and I know each other from the dog. Oh, this is going to be bad. 
Mm-hmm. We I'm, like I'm bad. Oh, Where's it going right now? We ben, like bad. Ben and I know yeah. each other from the dog park. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, they <laughs> the walk dog dogs. Park. What do we used to do in the dog park? Because we used to walk our dogs from our apartments to the dog park so they could play and run and be with other dogs. <laughs> they live in New York. <laughs> And <laughs> and so we met and and uh, our dogs were friends and so we would talk and Ben was like I'm gonna open a sandwich shop I was like that's cool and then I didn't see him for a while but I had actually been to his sandwich shop without knowing that that was his place and then we ran into I was like oh wow that sandwich is so good blah 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 and we'd run into each other once in a while but then a few months ago we ran into each other at Ben's 12th Street location yeah in between Fifth and University in downtown Manhattan plug none pang <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, me and my partner Ratha we've done uh, four guest uh, chef collaborations Mario Batali Jean George other big food guys and we kind of wanted to go into a different lane because uh, we love music a lot saw Adam and it was just sort of a natural thing uh, we bring the other collaborator into the shop, try to pick their brain and see what they're into. Adam's first idea was a spaghetti and meatball sandwich, which was a little bit of a curveball for me. I didn't know how to respond, you know, but uh, I talked him off the ledge, yeah. right? And I brought him back. A l- I mean, I'm, you did. You, it's, you, a little, it's a little hurtful, but well, it's not such a bad didn't idea. Didn't you, uh, what was it, high school you used to have the at the bodega? With I the, used to get a spaghetti uh, sandwich every day right that's okay all right <laughs> it's delicious so, no nobody that's where the idea was born um uh-huh. and then you know being two new york guys the iconic pastrami sandwich comes to mind and uh i know a, a gentleman that produces pastrami in red hook keeping it local and and here it is and so what's know, the sandwich called it's called the ad rock lunch box the uh-huh. ad rock oh. lunch box lunchbox, yeah. all right and so people buy the ad rock lunch box and then how much of that money goes all, to the shelter? All shelters? profits. All profits oh, from wow. the sandwich, That's right. Dope. Okay. <laughs> and actually, I'd just like to point out, Sway was a little bit instrumental in the in the thing. He didn't know it. But last time I was on the show, you know, he made a comment. You know, he's a part-time comedian. He he said, he said uh, he goes, uh, you have a, a Cambodian sandwich shop. You, you don't, don't they eat dog over there? So, you know. <laughs> That's uh, not how know, oh, 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 And I was oh, like, you know what? You know, from, from that. Yeah. <laughs> It was. Uh, there was no sound effects for that. <laughs> Just uh, okay. Anyway, wow. that's not how I put it. <laughs> Just pull out. Let's play the tape back. All right. Yeah. Oh, but uh, so uh, if people want to, so this isn't an online thing. Like, if people want to, can they donate online as well? Uh, uh, you just got to go in the store, enjoy the, the little lunchbox, and uh, I should say also comes with some of uh, Adam's childhood treats, the uh, the wise potato chips, the, uh, the the cream soda, and the spicy dill pickle. You no know brass monkey in that box? I mean, <laughs> we do next, have, next time. We do have High Life at the 25th okay, Street okay. store. Oh, so. yeah, they really do. <laughs> so do, do you have a website, though, that people could go on for the shop? www.numpongnyc.com. How do you spell spelled? Yeah, thank you. Oh, you guys are pros. Uh, N-U-M-P-A-N-G-N-Y-C. Nam Pong. Yeah. All right. Uh, hey, man, Adam, man, thanks for coming up, bro. Sh- I mean, I just live down the street. I'll come up another time. <laughs> I don't do, we've established oh, that I don't do much. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Hey, man, do, do you still program beats and stuff? I sure do. Ooh. Oh, I got an idea for you. Oh, <laughs> let's start a band. No, let's I'm do it. Saying, let's no. go on the road. Do them same rhymes from Odin now. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, man, listen, man. Uh, thank you for coming up. Ben, thank you as well. Anytime, man. See you at the Nets game. Yes, sir. And uh, Adam, you got to come back again, man. Just yeah. hang out with us, okay? Because okay. I know you got While We Are Young, the movie. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. I could do that, too. I'm in a movie, yes. everybody. <laughs> yes. I'm in a movie that just came out with Ben Stiller. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in that movie. How big just is came role? out. How big is your role? <laughs> it's, I, you know, it's no big deal. I play Ben Stiller's friend. You heard of Ben Stiller, right? He's yeah, a yeah, known, yeah. little known actor. And yeah. I'm <laughs> in right. it. It just came out on Friday. Wow, congratulations. That's a big yeah. movie, DB, right? DB is our movie expert. He is to movies what Caesar Milano is to dogs. Wow. This is a very great movie. I would suggest go seeing it now. Great. <laughs> All right, uh, Adam, Ben, thank you for coming That was like a tweet <laughs> of a review. That was great. Okay. All right, thank you, bro. All right. Appreciate you. you, man. It's Sway in the morning. Only on Shade 45.